Hey, I'm a Mechanical Engineer, and this is part two on how to build a one pound spinner battle bot. So as I said, this is part two on how to build a one pound spinner battle bot. If you haven't already seen part one, I highly suggest you watch that one first. I'll leave a link below, but in today's video, we'll be finishing the battle bot. I also have listed down below the links to all the parts I bought to build the robot. So if you're interested, feel free to check those out. But enough talk. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. With the frame of the robot now complete, we can open it up and begin to drop in all the electronics. I'm going to start by bolting my brushless outrunner motor to the front of the frame. Then push the cables off to the side to make room for our speed controller to be dropped in and output wires fed through the bottom side hole. Just like that, we can now plug our motor into the speed controller. Now it is time for the drive motors. For motors, I'm going to be using two small 6 volt geared motors. I believe they're 200 RPM. I'm going to connect the motors to these two brushed ESCs and then connect all three ESCs battery input wires together. That way we'll only have to plug our battery into one port instead of three separate ones. And although these are not necessarily the best ESCs you could use, I had them on hand and they'll do the job. So once the motors are soldered to them, we can go ahead and slide the motors into the motor housings on each side of the frame, then drop in just a dab of, oh, I'm sorry, it's 2018. Then drop in just a drop of hot glue into the motor housings to stop the motors from backing out. Dabbing is dead. Next, we can take all three of our cables and plug them into the receiver, making sure to plug them into the channels we want to control them through. Then tightly pack everything into the housing, leaving a small hole for our battery to fit into later on. I'm now going to attach our drive wheels, which are actually meant for RC plane landing gear, onto the drive shafts. And although these wheels are more than good enough to be able to move our robot around, they're nothing fancy. Now onto the blade. After thinking about it for a little while, I've decided to go with a small circular power saw blade that is originally meant to cut tile. Although this particular blade has 36 very small teeth, they do make several other blades very similar size to this one with varying length and teeth number on them. So if I ever want to go with a more aggressive blade, it shouldn't be that difficult to upgrade. However, just like with any power saw blade that you'll buy, originally this blade's inner hole was much too large for the spinner motor to be able to bolt onto. So what I did is I took two washers whose inner holes perfectly matched up with our spinner motor, then super glued them onto each side of the blade into the very center of the blade. Now all we have to do is drop this onto the motor, then bolt it down. And just like that. Now two real quick things about the blade. First, the blade is held in place by the bolt itself, not by the super glue we used to glue on the washers. The only reason we super glued the washers on is to guarantee that the blade is perfectly centered when we drop it onto the motor so that we can bolt it. This is actually extremely similar to how circular saws operate. And secondly, as I'm sure you can see, the cone piece that I'm using right now to bolt down the blade sticks well above the top of the robot, preventing it from being truly invertible because the wheels are perfectly centered so it can drive on both sides. I am going to replace this with a smaller, shorter, more compact nut. I just have yet to buy it. And with that, after I drop in my 11.1 volt 500 milliamp battery into the robot and plug it in, the robot is complete. So with everything in the robot and the robot complete, it weighs in at 407 grams, 50 grams below weight. With that good news, we can now go ahead and test it. In, 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 stay replay. Watch this bot drive over this block. Wow. Not too shabby, if I may say so myself. The wheels seem to stick out at just the right height. The robot gets plenty of traction while still staying low enough to the ground to where it'll be difficult for other robots to get underneath it. The motor and blade also work together nicely. However, if I were to be 100% honest, I might end up swapping it out for a smaller motor simply because this one's almost too powerful, believe it or not. 
However, this is a spinner, and a sad fact of spinners is they can often do just as much damage to themselves as they do to their opponent. You can't really stop that from happening, however you can minimize it to some degree due to your bot design and blade. When testing this robot, I hit something funny, and the part of what I hit flew back and broke off this front corner of my top hood. I just simply glued it back on to finish this video, but of course I'm going to have to replace the whole top piece before I get in the fight. And really, that's just a BattleBot fact of life. You have to have spares of everything on you because you never know what could break, especially the spinner motor itself. But even with all that being said, I'm very happy with how this robot turned out. And there you have it, how to build a one pound spinner. But hey, thank you so much for you guys watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And Logan, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. And please feel free to subscribe.